Hey traders, checking into the stock market today. We saw the cryptocurrency space break bull over the weekend. We had a dip this morning in the broader market, but bulls buy it aggressively yet again. Certainly frustration, FOMO, disbelief. We've got a whole lot of emotions out there. Sweetie Pants is in the building. Let's look at the charts. Before we get to the charts, if you're a crypto trader, we're running a free month trial on our Trader Pro alert system. There is a link in the description of this video and the code is free trial. The goal is on your free trial, you use it to make money and then you use that money to continue the service, to continue making more money. Everybody wins. And if you don't, you cancel, no harm done. All right, so S&P 500, strong close up at the high, the bulls keeping complete control. And again, just talking about the emotions, we obviously have FOMO from the bulls at this point. We have disbelief from the bears and frustration from the bears significantly. And I made the comment in the, the afternoon live stream with the chart guys here. I'm almost looking forward to more people being converted to technical analysis the longer this goes on. Because again, so many fundamental traders' minds are being blown by what's going on right now. It just doesn't make any sense. That happened to me back in my first two years of trading. This doesn't make any sense. Why? You know, how, how is the price reacting like this when the fundamentals are supposed to be this? So I completely detached the two. And I think the more this happens, and it happened with the Reddit boom and, you know, the price action that we were seeing on those names and how market cap didn't mean a thing with GameStop and AMC. So just more and more periods of people being converted to technical analysis, in my opinion, because if fundamentals go out the window and don't make sense to an individual, what else do you have aside from technical analysis? So I'm in disbelief now at this point as a bull, which shows you how far we've gotten in terms of just the complete control from these fear lows, testing the fear lows to where we stand right now. So on SPY, we're looking at the adjusted resistance level of 456.70, which is in play. And if we break that level, we are testing the highest levels. We will be at the highest levels in over two months. And again, every move up that we see, the retracement size gets more significant, the proximity to all time highs gets closer, and the proximity or the distance from all time lows gets further. Here we have a retracement now approaching 70% on this bounce. The burden is on the bears. There were a couple things today that the bears started to show some life, but they did not follow through. And it was all of our major sectors were near the lows of the day at the same time. They didn't really all hit the lows at the same time. They were all within a very close range. That stood out to me. We had the VIX. I'll, I'll look at the VIX in just a moment. It was a, a, a printed candle that was a bit of a, a misleading candle. We'll look at that. So that was almost a signal on the VIX, but in the end, it was just a bit of a, a, a fake out candle. And the other thing was, what was it? I forget what. But there were a few things that stood out to me. Okay, this is a little bit different. Bears might be ready to prove it. And then second half of the day, nope. V-shaped bounce, up at the highs. NASDAQ. So on the NASDAQ, I started the morning watching a potential channel. And it was just a rising wedge, actually, with a key resistance level and a key support. And they came into play very nicely, both of them, during the regular trading hours. So I drew this this morning. We bounced right off resistance, rejected right off resistance, I should say, and pulled back. So that was nice for bears. And then we bounced right off support and V-shaped to the high. I would have expected the V-shaped to the high to break the high of the day and then lack follow through and come back in this channel. But we blew right through this uptrend resistance line. And that was all that short-term bears had to be hoping for. And this was a scenario where with QQQ, I entered some bear positions this morning because we rejected from that resistance line that I had drawn. So I entered SQQQ on this two minute lower high here on this bounce. And so they followed through, but fortunate enough, there was a confluence of signals. We had a two minute falling wedge aligning with that uptrend support line. And that really helped me from getting overly bearish. So this is the NASDAQ here. And I literally had a falling wedge drawn on a rising wedge. And it was a confluence of signals, a two minute falling wedge at rising wedge support. So I exited half of my SQQQ position right around the low of the day. And granted, I should have exited it all, but still offsetting. And right now I'm in a scenario where my bullish positions are obviously still going up. 
And I'm just offsetting some of those gains by keeping some protection and keeping some bear exposure. And I do fluctuate like I did today where I had a lot more bear exposure at the highs or off, off the resistance, exited half at the lows, did scale back in a little bit of a position for overnight. So again, I've got some bear exposure overnight, but Tesla long, Facebook long. And another factor for me now is I got a lot of long crypto exposure with the Bitcoin bull break that took place over the weekend. So anytime I'm offsetting my long positions, I'm thinking of those positions as well with the correlation that we see with the broader market. So the NASDAQ, the bulls are in complete control. QQQ just keeps going higher. And we're looking at some short-term resistance levels in play, 366.36 and 369.64, both being tested. And again, just a higher low everyday pattern here on QQQ, aside from 18 cents back last Wednesday or last Thursday. And the hourly uptrend is just remaining strong. Even the weakness today, anything above the low of Friday afternoon was just an hourly higher low. And now we've got even more space. Anything above the low today will just be an hourly higher low. We have to see something change. We have to see something different. Again, I did recognize that there were a few potential differences shaping up, but they didn't follow through. So bulls keeping control. SMH broke the low of Friday, but closed at the high of the day, at the high of its bounce. Next resistance level after 277.46 is 280.18. And on the weekly perspective, still in a downtrend. Anything under 290.35 is just a lower high. We will need an eventual weekly trend change, but bulls still keeping complete short-term control. Tesla, gap up. We had news about a potential split completely ignoring news that production plant in China is going to shut down for a couple weeks. Last night, that news came out. If you told me we were going to gap up and have a 5% plus day or whatever it was, I would say, what are you smoking? But here we are. Tesla right now, all time high is $150 away, $152 away. And we're currently $391 off the low. And I'm going to hold my position and give the bulls a chance at all time highs. That may change, but for now, I'm keeping all time highs in the picture with how we look on this bounce and the fact of how much stronger we are than QQQ on this move. Tons of space for the daily higher low. Bulls are patiently waiting for first hourly oversold conditions, which have not even come close since that 755 weekly higher low. Got a little bit rising wedgy at the end of the day, just as the bull break lacked any follow through. But again, I'm just going to use the hourly uptrend as my guide and 1071 is an hourly higher low. XLV, hourly first oversold conditions right there, trying to confirm the bull flag, 137.67 resistance, Amazon. So NVDA set the stage. And remember the video last week where I said every single bull wants to do what NVDA just did. Hourly oversold, marked the daily higher low, and then we confirmed a bull flag. Now Amazon did it, delayed, same exact thing. Hourly oversold was right there. There's your daily bull flag confirming. XLV is attempting to do it. XLF is attempting to do it. That was another one of the potential red flags. XLF initially failed the daily bull flag. We were right here pre-market. And then we opened with a bunch of weakness. But here we are still keeping the daily bull flag alive as long as 3869 support holds. So NVDA and Amazon, Confirmed daily bull flags, XLF and XLV are attempting to confirm those daily bull flags. And again, we have the daily support level. We could say there is zero red flag unless we break 3869 support. And same thing for XLV. There is zero red flag unless we break 134 support. IWM held support today, trying to keep its bull flag alive. There is zero red flag unless we break 202.73 support. Burden on bulls to get over 208.64 and 208.38, little double top. But again, bears just aren't proving it. They've got to take out those little short-term daily supports to see any kind of shift in momentum. Biotech sector did see weakness, and it is clearly a weaker sector, but it's not going to drop significantly unless the broader market does as well. So at this point, we're looking for a weekly higher low on XBI, anything above 80.34, 
and it's a potential inverse head and shoulders here, the Bulls still have the proving to do. TLRY. So again, I head into this week. What am I going to be trading as a day trader? Easy answer. TLRY. I forgot. <laughs> I failed the easy answer. TLRY. Watching the Reddit names, GMC, GME, and AMC. I know NIO and Tesla are both going to be volatile. That's all I need. Just those few names. I'll find bullish and bearish trades on those names. If you give me 3% ranges, 5% ranges, 10% ranges, there's definitely trading opportunity within that. So TLRY this morning, weakness, we know we're scouting an hourly higher low compared to 725. And so we got it. It was five minute oversold conditions. Big drop first thing. So we hit five minute oversold, V-shaped bounce to a new high of the day. We then had a 15 minute tightening range. It broke bull into a new high of the day. Granted, not a lot of follow through, but that's 5%. I mean, what's that from the low of the day to the high of the day? And again, the backdrop is we know we're scouting an hourly high or low, 10% move. So it's important to have that backdrop confidence. You know, if you ask me, what is the probability that we set an hourly higher low this morning? I'd say 80%. So then finding that hourly higher low by being a little bit more attentive and a little bit more aggressive on the five and 15 minute time frame makes it a lot easier to find that hourly higher low. If I'm not sure an hourly higher low is going to form, it's a lot harder to scout that bull entry. But TLRY right now is a potential head and shoulders, but the burden's on the bears. They have to break 761 to confirm the hourly downtrend into daily consolidation. Daily inside bar. Peers were weaker. That's worth noting as well. Daily consolidation already started. USMJ much weaker. We already knew that much, but CGC broke the low of Friday and other peers did as well. Cron did not, but ACB did. No, it didn't. So I guess only CGC did. Those peers came real close, but didn't break. So there's plenty of volatility in the cannabis space. TLRY is my horse there for volatility. Again, don't care what direction. Be looking for bull trades and bear trades. AMC, monster day to day, what's that, 40%? Something stupid? Again, we're seeing risk on. Crypto breaking out. Reddit names, 100% plus off the lows. It's just going from fear to risk on FOMO as fast as possible. And with this, you know, what, what am I going to chase? Where's my entry here? You wait for clarity. So you have a 15-minute stair step. Maybe you short and top fish when the 15-minute stair step pattern breaks. Maybe you wait for a 15-minute equilibrium. A bull can be looking for the higher low entry here. If you're not confident, you don't want to be buying the top, Maybe you buy the 15-minute equilibrium bull break, and then you have a clear stop level with the last 15-minute higher low. So waiting for ranges to establish is key. And it happens midday often. There's often midday consolidation to give you levels to play off of and patterns, familiar patterns. You know, a breakout, runaway bull move, I'm not chasing that, but if you give me an equilibrium and a tightening range and levels to play off of, the risk and reward is much more favorable at that point. And GME had the same... 15 minute tightening range here. Bull break into the end of the day. Just monster moves in these Reddit names. CCJ Uranium, trying for the daily higher low, looking off of EMA 12. And hit hourly oversold. We need the hourly trend change back to the bulls. So I'm scouting for it. I'm scouting for a place where I'm looking for a swing trade entry where I say that is either the daily higher low or I want to be stopped out. And we have not found that level yet but I'm watching for it over the next couple of days. And maybe tomorrow, if we open right here, right now, maybe I make an entry and put a stop under 27.54 to give the bulls a chance for the hourly trend change. Maybe I wait for the hourly trend change to confirm and then use a smaller position size because there's more risk before I would stop out, but then that's the low that I play off of. The VIX is at historical bounce levels. The RSI is currently 34. And if you look back, we've gone over this before, but 36 to 34, we get a bunch of bounces. In the extremes, it does get a little bit more beat up. 2016 was an extreme here. And that RSI got down to 31.5. So we know it can go lower, can always go lower. We're just looking at historical probabilities. 2012, we dropped down to 31s. So the most extreme of the most extreme of the last decade were 31s. I don't trade the VIX, but if you drop down to the 31s, 
I'm going to trade the VIX. And last week I said, you drop down to the 34s, I'll be interested in trading the VIX. But I'm just being real picky to have real high probabilities. And this is the fake out candle that I was talking about. Just a one minute print that really screwed everything up as far as I'm concerned for clarity. I, I'm considering the high of today, 2236. But what that wick did there, that one minute candle, it broke the stair step pattern. So, you know, if you're not paying extra attention there, you see the stair step pattern break bull and you buy the top. Four hour EMA 12 resistance for over a week. Looks like we're finally going to break it. But again, it was a fake out wick and we just rejected right from it and it's keeping resistance. So that is my guide Four hour EMA 12. As long as it's resistance, the bears have complete control. One more red day and I'm definitely getting interested. I don't even know what I would trade UVXY. Probably, but it's not much different than, you know, grabbing SQQQ. Oil, daily lower high is set. Again, these stair step patterns are beautiful. Higher low every day, lower high every day, higher low every day. Just an equilibrium, which was always the most likely scenario once we saw the size of this pullback. Now we scout a higher low compared to 92.20. The burden of proof is on the bulls to confirm the four hour trend change back in their favor. Nice and clear, very clear. And last gold, gold bulls really need to show up right here and now. And I'm pretty much coming back down towards my entries on GLD and SLV from last week. But if you lose these daily higher lows, more importantly than the daily higher lows, I'm gonna use these lows. I'm gonna use 1895 on gold and silver, whatever it's low is there. Because if those levels break, the probability that we're gonna see a new higher high on the weekly in the near term drops very significantly for me. Because at that point, just like oil is giving us the equilibrium, we would then be scouting the weekly equilibrium on the metals, which could take us into June if we break 1895. If that's our weekly high or low, we can recover and see a new all-time high sooner rather than later. So that's a really important low for me, and it's not a coincidence that it aligns with the weekly EMA 12. So overall, my, my perspective is on a daily basis, I'm looking to protect these longs for the inevitable daily consolidation, but again, just baffled on a daily basis as it continues to grind higher. So I have my bull exposure down and my bear exposure to protect that bull exposure has definitely taken away some of my profits on the bull side the last couple of days. But again, all I want is just my account higher every single day. And so far that's been what's happening the last two weeks. And so I'm gonna to look to continue to have that happen. And just every single day, just prove it bears, show me, I'm ready. I'm ready to, to flip to a, a, a larger bear position than my bull exposure, if you can give me a reason to. And they just have not given me a reason to. Watching for it on a daily basis. All right, do good things. I appreciate you watching and we will see you tomorrow. So one of the reasons I chose to live in Western North Carolina was the abundant water and plant life in case I ever have to be self-reliant in terms of finding my own food and water. So in this video, I'm going to do a plant walk and we're just going to go through and look at all the edible stuff that just grows in the yard that I never planted and that there's abundant amounts of. I did do some planting of some lettuce and greens here, but if we look down here, these are violets. I did not plant these and they are edible. So that's one. Over here we've got chickweed. It's one of the first plants that comes out in the spring. That's edible. Dandelions. Plenty of those. We know those are edible. So we got three. Plenty of dandelions for everybody. Plenty of violets for everybody. Every purple flower you see is an edible little plant. These are purple dead nettles. Those are edible. Just growing on the side of the driveway. These are wild green onions. Did not plant those. They're everywhere in areas that I let overgrow. I even got the edible purple dead nettle growing on my steps. That's not even scratching the surface. 
So that is a small fraction, and then you got the fungi on top of it. There is abundance in these hills.